If you're ready to harness the power of your communications data, blast off with Nihilus today. Hello, and welcome to Coding with Nihilus, the live stream where we talk about programming, APIs, and more. Uh, my name is Vlad, Senior Developer Advocate. And my name is Ram, Developer Advocate at Nihilus. How are you today, Ram? I am doing great. I'm excited for this live stream. Uh, we were talking about it last week about 3D modeling. Uh, mm -hmm. But before we jump in, how have you been? I've been doing fine, thank you. Although the weather here is kind of crazy. I mean, we had like a lot of sun and today was even kind of like a little bit of snow and it's windy. So it's great. It's, it's the fun transition to summer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so today, as I always say, this live stream is about programming APIs and more. We're coming to the more part, which is how to model a simple scene using Blender. And what's Blender? It's a 3D modeling software. It's free, open source, and completely amazing. So you can go, uh, I'm gonna share my screen so you can see the Blender page. Let me share it. Share screen. And there you go. You just need to go to blender.org and you're gonna land into the Blender homepage. Where there's a lot of information, you just can simply download. I'm gonna use Blender 2.5, which is the latest version. And it's only 236 megabytes. Just install it either on Windows, Linux, or Mac, and you're ready to start using it. Um, so let me open a blender. So here we're gonna choose general. So we're gonna do just 3D modeling. And here we have our default cube. By the way, I'm using my Wacom tablet with my stylus. That's awesome. because I realize, uh, yeah, it's kind of easier to use, at least for me, than the mouse or that the trackpad. At first, it's kind of complicated, but when you get used to use it, it's just really nice. And what I'm doing, and let me show this real quick. So if I open the Wacom Center, I have here the mapping settings, which are open somewhere. Uh, let me see. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. Oh, here it is. So. For Blender, what I'm saying is that this one down below is going to be the middle click, and this one up here is going to be the right click, and the tip of my stylus is going to be the click. Why? Because in Blender, we use the right click to select something. So I just need to press here and select something. Uh, we use the middle button if we want to move around things, and we use the click for other things. So. It's always nice to have your pen configured to use in Blender. So let me go back. Uh, there's one thing that we're going to need to do for sure. So we need to go into Edit, then Preferences, and then we need to go into Input. And we need to make sure we have Emulate NumPad checked. And this is because in Blender, you can use different keys to have different sides of view. So, for example, if I press the number one, you can see it changed it to the front orthographic view. If I press two, it's going to be slightly to the right. So, I pressing it, it's going to start moving. Or three, it's going to present the right one. Uh, I think seven, it's going to present the top. So, for laptops that doesn't have like this separate uh, set of numbers. Using this here helps quite a bit. So remember preferences, input, and then emulate numpad. Also, one that is really useful, just need to go into add-ons. And here we're going to type node. And we want to check node wrangler. So node wrangler, it's a tool or a script that is going to help us with texturing, which you're going to see later on What I'm saying it's amazing. 
so we're going to start here. We have here the default cube. And kind of like the Blender joke is that you need to delete the default cube just to add a new default cube, which uh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to grab this one. We can see we can move it freely. But we're going to press 1 just to be under the graphic. We want to have this bigger because we want to have kind of like a room. We want to create a table and a couple of chairs. So we're going to press S for scale. And then we're going to press the number 4. And then we're going to press Enter. So we just scale our cube and make it like four times its size. So now it's way bigger. Now what we want to do is we want to press the Tab button. So you see that it changed a little bit because now we are on edit mode. And what we want to do is go here on the top and we want to select the last one, which is faces. So if we press A two times, so A, A, we deselect everything. We want to grab the side. You see in the right click, then shift to select this one too this one, and this one. So we pretty much want to get rid of the top, and we want to get rid of the sides. And actually, not all sides. Actually, let's move it. So the top and these two here, we're going to press X, and then we're going to select faces. So we're going to get rid of the faces, and it's, we're going to have some sort of like an iso isographic view. So we're going to have the floor and a couple of walls. But we want this to be more aligned with the red line that we have here. So we can press Tab again, just to be out of edit mode. With the cube selected, and we want to just click on here, double click, and rename it to room. But we know that that's a room and just not a cube. So here we're going to press G, like the letter G like in geography. We're going to press that one. We're going to press the letter set, like in Zebra. And then we're going to press 4 and Enter. And let me do it again. So G, set, 4, Enter. And you see that we just moved up our cube so it's aligned with the floor. And if we press Shift and the middle button, we're going to be able to pan, so like move to the sides. Now that we have done that, we want to select the camera with a right click. And we want to press now G, set, set again, uh, two, and then enter. So we just kind of moving away the camera a little bit. And if we press the number zero, we're going to have the camera view. So we might need to lift it a little bit. But for now, that's fine. I have my little script here, so I don't waste too much time trying to put all the things in the right, uh, the right place. So now that we want to create a table, what we're going to do is press Shift and A. And we're going to have the little menu, Shift A. We're going to select Mesh and then Cube. And you're going to see that the cube is going to appear here where we have our cursor. So now that we have that, we want to press S1.5 1, 1. and then press Return because we want to make it a little bit bigger because the share, uh, the table is needs to be bigger than the shares. So we just give it a little bit more space. And just then, curious. Yes. Well, you you were doing scale 1.5 and you're just going through and doing it by shortcut, shortcut by shortcut. So you did S 1.5. Mm -hmm. You can actually do this through the UI as well. It just take longer. Is that, that another workflow as well? Uh, yeah, that takes longer to do it like that. I mean, using the keyboard, it's just way easier. And gotcha. you get used okay. to that like after a while. And actually Perfect. it's funny because I stopped doing Blender for like a couple of years and then I completely forgot all the commands. 
it was like it was yes, it was hard, but yeah, like using like that is is way easier. Uh, so now that we have the cube, we want to kind of like shrink it to be like the base of our table. So we can press S set 0 0.05 and then press enter. And you're gonna see that now it's kind of like flat, but it's kind of like still on top uh, of our cube. So we're gonna press G set 1.5 enter. So we move it a little bit upward. And we want to change this into table. And most likely we want to go here uh, to our room where there's a little eye and just click on it. So it disappears, it's just hidden. It's still there, but we cannot see it. So it doesn't interrupt us when we need to do something with this. Now what we need to do now is right click on here. We're gonna move a little bit so it's we're seeing its bottom. We're gonna press tap to be on edit mode. And now we're gonna do something that is called a uh, loop cut. So we're gonna press Control R, and we want to move the cursor to be here, so we have that yellow line. We're gonna press eight and enter, and enter. So we press eight just to create eight loop cuts, and we press uh, enter two times just to fix it in place. So now we're gonna do the same, Control R, but on the opposite side. We're gonna press eight and then enter, enter. So now we can see that we have everything like cut into little boxes. So what we're gonna do now, is just gonna select with right click, uh, switch here, where actually right now, we're on edges, we want to be on faces. So we're gonna select pressing shift the four corners. We're gonna press one to be on, on front uh, orthographic perspective. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna extrude the legs. So we're gonna press E for extrude, set set, one, 1. 1.4, oh, actually it was minus. You see when I did what it went up. So extrude, set set, minus one, 0.4, and here we have the legs of our table. So, something simple. Uh, we can press tab again, so we can see here our table. So our table should be ready, and what we're gonna do is use this table as a base to create our chairs. So we're gonna press Shift D, as in day, then we're gonna press X, and we're gonna press minus four. So what we have done is we duplicate the table with Shift D, and by pressing X, we're gonna move it, and what, by pressing minus four, we're moving it on four positions to the left. Then we want to scale that, because obviously the chair can be the same size as the table, and we would like to before uh, removing this into share. So simple, we're gonna uh, shrink it on all sides. So S for scale, X 0 0.5, enter. S Y 0 0.5, enter. And S set 0 0.5, enter. So you can see that now the table is way smaller the chair is way more smaller than the table. And we just wanted to move it a little bit. So we're gonna say G set minus 0 0.75, enter. So now it's kind of like in the ground. But now it's kind of like the chair without uh, a rest. So we're There's gonna- no backrest. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we're gonna test, uh, press tab to go into edit mode. We're gonna go a little bit closer. And for that, you can press Command, uh, middle button. I just move up and down, and that's gonna do the zoom for us. So we're gonna select all 
pull this oh. one here. So all the back um, squares you're going to do like an S root with a positive value. Is that the idea? Exactly. So gotcha. okay. if we do S root set set 1.2, we have the back of the chair. We press that, and that's it. Nice and easy. So here we can go to the side. We can press here the move, and we can put it either here or a little bit to the side. So now that we have our chair, we just can simply say Shift D, X, and I don't know, let's say like four probably. And we just duplicate it and move it here to the right. So we just can grab, move it here. We can press R for rotate. R. So it's a rotation R. of 180. Uh huh. Exactly. Or 360, actually. Yeah. Yeah, 180 should be. Yeah, fine. 180. And then we can have it here. <clears throat> and actually, we can kind of like go like R set and just move it a little bit slightly. So it's kind of like not that focused. And we can grab this one back again, duplicate it. And this time we can press E. So it's on this side, and let's pray for, we can set R set minus 90. So we rotate it on the side, and we just can put it here. So not so much. And now we have our table with some chairs. So what we are going to do now is we're going to add some texture so it looks nicer. So I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to go tap. I'm going to press A to select everything. I'm going to press U, like in university. And here, I'm going to press a Smart UV Project. And this is what it's going to do. It's kind of like it's going to map uh, the table. It's kind of like unwrap it. It's like when you have a candy. Uh, that is have uh, an image, for example. You can see that they have the hands here and the face here, but when you open up, it's like all spread. It's kind of like the same concept. But this one is going to kind of like do it for you. So Smart UV Project is going to take care of doing that unwrapping because otherwise you need to do it yourself and then not really good at that. So we're going to press OK. It's unwrapped. We need to go here into the material, and we're going to press new. So the plus sign, new. And we're going to say here that this is the table. We're going to use notes, which is fine. We're going to go to the shading tab. And remember I told you about Node Wrangler? This is why Node Wrangler is awesome. You just select this one. You press Shift, Control, and T. And it's going to ask us to select uh, the images that we want to use. So here, we're going to go into Blender. I have here some wood. So, so I you're like going to wrap the table you know, with wood? Something like that. So I'm going to give it uh, like a wood texture. So normally, what you do is you use kind of like the base, base color. But you also have like roughness, like normal, little things that is going to give them a more realistic view. In this case, as we're using Node Wrangler, we simply need to select everything and boom. It's going to create everything for you. All the things that you need to do manually. So like the normal, the roughness, the base color, the ambient occlusion, all the mapping already done for us. So if we go back to the layout and press here the last button, you're going to see that our table has kind of like this wood texture. We're going to do the same for the chair. So we're just going to grab one chair. I'm going to do the same here, new. We're going to call it chair. We're going to go into shading. We're going to select our material. 
uh, we forgot to unwrap it. So again, press tab, A to select, press U, Smart UV Project, and that's it. So where is my share here? Oh, here it is. It was kind of hidden. So I select here, Shift, Control, and T. And for the chairs, I'm going to use, let's say, this Brazilian rosewood. So you're going to see here, OK, it's kind of ugly. So we're going to use another one, probably. Uh, I just need to select everything. So I don't need to do anything with these that are already here. I just go back to principle BFSD, press again, and just can simply choose another one for like, let's say this Redwood tree bark. And it's gonna replace everything for me. Uh, still looking a little bit ugly, but okay, I mean, we can use it. So here for this other chair, we just need to go here and can, we can select the same one. And you're gonna see that it looks weird, but that's because we haven't actually do the unwrapping for the other chairs. So we're gonna do the same. It looks kind of weird because of the material, but it looks, looks a little bit better. So we have our table, our chairs, and we can put back our room. And for our room, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So we're gonna grab it. We have a material here. We're gonna unwrap this. Smart UV project. And here we're gonna have something else for the walls. So we have this white stucco, which is gonna be nicer. Perfect. But then we don't want the floor to be like that. So what we're going to do you're just gonna select the floor. We de select everything with AA. We're gonna select the floor and we're gonna press seven because we want to be on the top orthographic view. So once we are in the top, we're gonna press U again, but instead of doing a smart UV project, we're gonna say project from view. So we're just gonna grab that space at cube. Project from view and here, we're going to create a new material. We're going to call it floor. And here we have some tiles on the floor. We have some black tiles. And we actually need to assign it. So with the floor selected, I need to press assign. And then we have it. Perfect. So we're going to grab this light here. It's going to be a little bit too high. So let's put in on 800. Uh, we're going to move it a little bit. Let's go back to layout. And then you can see here how it looks nicer. But we want to move the light a little bit. So the walls have this stucco uh, kind of view. We're going to grab this light and duplicate it by pressing Shift D. And we're just going to kind of move it like this. I'm, I'm curious, what does your camera view look like? So if I press zero, it's going to look like this. That's not uh, bad. Yeah, we don't want to see this because it's got oh. kind of empty space. So what gotcha. we can do is, yeah, we can go to one, grab the camera. And just move it a little bit up here, press zero, press one, and we can just move it until we are happy with how our camera is looking at. So still a little bit, probably we can put it a little bit uh, closer. Closer, exactly. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more, and then that's the problem. 
this is where you spend the most time. I mean, modeling is not that hard, but putting the camera in the right place and actually having the right lighting, it's, it's crazy. That's the crazy part, where you spend most of your time. So that's kind of okay. I think actually a little bit. Uh, yeah, I wanted actually to see the full table. So let's put it a little bit down. And let's say for now, that's almost fine. But let's say we're happy with that. At least we have our table, we have our floor and everything. So we can go here to render and there press render image. This one is using uh, only 64 samples, which is kind of like just not enough. So here we can change it to, let's say 500 on both render and viewport. So when I press render again, it's gonna take a little bit more time, but it's gonna look nicer. It's gonna be more detail. And actually you can go to like, you can go crazy. Usually you don't go more than 2000 because otherwise it's gonna take a long time unless you have a, a GPU. And here it all depends on the textures that you use, the correct lining, and everything. Uh, but this is kind of how like you model a simple scene using Blender. So you can see that it's not really that complicated. So what do you think? Yeah, that was actually really impressive seeing you walk through it. And I'm glad you had like a cheat sheet of the different <laughs> steps. Yeah, otherwise I um, just spent a lot of time like moving here, 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 not needs to be here, not seems to be here, and this will be bigger and smaller. So actually at first when I was starting to do this, I had like one, two, three, like a lot of pages, and then I was like, no, no, that's too much. I need to make it like just one line or just one page of beans. It's actually really intuitive once you understand the commands because I was starting to pick up a few things in terms of there's one command, one key character, and then you provide a value and that value is in the grid of units. So it's very easy to move things around. So I understand that you have to write things down in terms of how many places to move something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that, that, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. And I realized that we went over for like uh, seven minutes. <laughs> ah, no worries, just, no worries. And that's like a long episode. Uh, so before we go, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you like crazy things like this, just let us know. We're going to try to accommodate. Uh, I have my Blender shirt, 2.8 code quest. So I support Blender all the way. <laughs> uh, remember that our live streams are every Wednesday and Friday at 2 p.m. EST, 11 a.m. PST. Uh, we didn't talk about SDKs, but we have four, Ruby, Node, Python, and Java that you can use with the Nylos APIs. Uh, and what's coming next week, Ram? <laughs> I like how we're going rapid fire through these <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> last few messages. And what do we have coming up next? We're gonna do an introduction to the Nylos Quick Start Guide. So this was released as a Monday. Uh, it's available to everyone. We've actually been building with it in mm -hmm. our past few live streams. If you go back to our live streams, you'll see a lot of the Quick Start Guide already there. And we just yeah. want to show you how to use a quick start guide to get started to uh, to get started with building with Nylas. You have been hiding your Easter eggs and plain sight. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I've been planting a few Easter eggs for sure. Uh, <laughs> but we're we're definitely going to share share all of that on Friday. Looking forward to that. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. Um, I think that's it. Uh, we went uh, overboard a little bit over time, but hope you like it. And see you on Friday. Can't wait to see what Ram had to show us. Bye, everyone. Take care. All right. See you. Thanks, Blood. Sure. Thanks.